Hello, Facebook family and friends. You have tuned in to Breakthrough Bible Study. That's right. It's time for you to go ahead and invite some friends, share some hearts, share some likes. Uh, let us know that you are tuned in. Go ahead and get your notepad, your pens, your pencils, uh, whatever you need to do to take notes tonight. I am so uh, honored that I get to use the gift of God that was placed inside of me before I was knit together in my mother's womb. I remember early in uh, my life as a believer, my husband uh, was a, a traveling evangelist all over the world, traveling evangelist. And when we got married, people used to say, uh, is your wife in ministry? And I remember joyfully saying, oh no, he's the minister. Uh, because I was in college and uh, a new wife, a new believer, and really trying to grasp hold of what God was doing in my life, who he was, how he spoke, what he required of me. So it is with sheer delight that I uh, am here uh, on behalf of Bethel International Christian Fellowship, where we are on a journey to love, heal, and grow with you in Christ Jesus. Uh, tonight's conversation, uh, we're going to talk about uh, the Holy Spirit deposited something in my spirit. And I told my husband um, that the spirit of the Lord spoke to me, friction and faith. That's right. Friction and faith. I see you, Minister Janice Peter. Hello, and thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, tonight, we're going to talk about friction and faith. And of course, I go to print out my message and I don't have one color ink. And these printers nowadays won't allow you to uh, print out. I'm still kind of old school in that manner that I like to have uh, my uh, messages, my keynote, whatever I'm doing that um, allows me to speak. I still like to kind of have it handwritten. I see your hearts Hello, Kiara Jackson. Keep fighting the good fight. Hello, Mr. Marshall, Abraham Marshall. I'm waving back at you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please share, please share, please share. Let's just go to God in prayer and get started. Your time is valuable. Uh, so is mine. So, Father, we just thank you tonight for the people of God. We thank you for every person who calls you Lord. We thank you for every person who is walking uh, the spirit, Father. We thank you that you are opening up hearts and minds, transforming us out of darkness into your marvelous light. God, we thank you that just like um, you did for the, 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 the people of God when you uh, rose Moses up, Father, you're going to raise up someone to help shake and break off this spirit of racism that uh, is attempting to destroy your fine creation, and that's us, human beings, African-American people. Father, you divided all the languages of the world. We are nature. We are the containers of your glory and your image. So thank you, Father, for fortifying our faith. Even in these uh, tumultuous times, even in these times where the war cries are going out, we give you praise and we give you thanks because we still look to you bringing about uh, your justice in behalf of this situation. So, hi, Rose Williams. Hello, Anitra Romero. Hello, Pastor Nelson. Hello, Deacon Bobby Merrill. I can't wait to see y'all. So listen, tonight, what I want to make sure you share, uh, I want to talk about the issue of friction and faith. Uh, when we look to Romans chapter 12 and 2 and then James verse 4 and 4, 
Uh, and I'm continuing to turn this way because my computer's there. Because I could hear somebody say, why she keep turning? I'm turning because I have uh, the message on my computer tonight. So let's go to the word of the Lord. Romans 12 and verse 2 and then James chapter 4 and verse 4. And the word of God says to us, do not be conformed to this world. Do not be conformed to this world. Whoever wants to be a friend of the world makes herself, makes herself an enemy to God. So when we look at what we are instructed to do in the book of Romans chapter 12 verse 2, we, we are told right up front, do not, do not be, don't be what everybody else is trying to be. Don't be this way and don't be that way and don't be conformed to what is happening in the world. Right now, that's kind of hard to do, right? We, we want to get involved and we, we want to uh, do what we need to do to have our voices heard. You know, the greatest place our voices can be heard are in the annals of heaven through prayer. So God told us in Romans 12 and 2, and, and we are living the message, he said, be conformed. You can be a lot of things, but I don't want you as a child of the Most High God to be conformed. And when we look at this word conform, we're looking at the word to give shape. We are looking at, by way of definition, to be identical. We are looking at uh, acting in accordance with customs and standards. Let me say that again. To not be conformed to the world's customs and standards. That is the mandate that God did not just give church people. He gave people who are apprehending his kingdom. Church people are one type of people and kingdom people are another type of people. That's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about friction and faith. Don't be conformed to the world. Can you just prophesy that to yourself? Uh, I won't be conformed to the world because we already know that James said, whoever is a friend of the world, and you got to understand this in proper context, don't go Willy Wonka on me, don't go over the edge and off the cliff, bring yourself, ask the Holy Spirit to bring your understanding into conformity to what God is saying, and what he's saying is, if you you got a choice. If you want to be a friend with the world, go ahead. But you cannot be a, a, a servant of the world and a servant of God at the same time. You cannot give shape. You cannot be identical in the way you think, in the way you feel, in philosophies, in any way. You cannot act in accordance. Come on, grown and over 21, but you cannot act in accordance to the customs and standards of the world. I see the hearts. I need some amens, amens, hallelujahs. That's a good place to give God some praise. The word friend, you know, a lot of us think we have friends. We we thought we had friends, but the word friend in this uh, text is talking about one attached to another by esteem or affection. God esteeming us highly, us esteeming him highly, us having natural affection toward him. There are all kinds of affections in the world, and some of them are weird, some of them are perverted, but God is talking about having a natural affection towards him, and he says, I no longer call you servants, I call you friends. A friend is all companion, someone that I like spending time with, I like chopping it up with, I like uh, doing activities with. Um, that is a favorite companion. So the entire system, when we look at what's going on right now, you can leave uh, this, this message and go cut on CNN or Fox or BET, any news media network, and we can see now that the entire world systems, the governments, go write this down, the world systems.
system, the world's governments, the world's philosophies, the trends and movements are in of the are in direct contrast. They are in opposition to the word of God and the purposes of God. That's what I said, the entire world system, uh, because we're talking about friction and faith. And, 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 and sometimes we have inner friction because we are trying to conform to the image and likeness of God, but yet we live in a world that's pulling on us and, and prodding us and, 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 and pushing us at some point. Uh, to be uh, embracive of its governments and philosophies and trends and movements. Uh, and always, listen, the world is always going to pull you in direct of God's will. Okay? You are not going to be a believer, a Christian, a friend of God, and not have opposition even in your faith. Your, your faith is going to experience friction. So the world is full of friction and faith, just like you are, right? I read a quote by a Chinese, uh, a Chinese it was a proverb quote, and I love what it said. It's right in line with what uh, the Spirit of the Lord is saying to us tonight. It's the gem, talking about you, cannot be polished without friction, nor man without trials. Did you hear that? The gem, uh, you put your name in there, uh, Attorney Kelly Vaughn, Prophetess Kelly, and just say, I, Prophetess Kelly, cannot be polished without friction nor without trials. So if you are going through trials, we already know of the governments, in spite of the philosophies, in spite of the trends, in spite of the movements, in spite of my own temptation and my trials and my tribulation, Job chapter 1 and verse 22 said that in spite of everything that was going on, that was friction, the Bible said Job did not sin and neither did he accuse God of doing wrong. Saints, we got to be in prayer right now because many, uh, many persons of color, particularly the African-American community, we are frictionized, if I can make up a word. Yeah, we, we right now are frictionized because we have been up under a system a philosophy. We have been up under a movement that uh, has attempted to literally wipe us off of the face of earth, right? Wipe us out, use our gifts, use our talents, use our treasure, but an evil, uh, demonic, ungodly uh, uh, government system, trend, a movement, uh, and Job said, in spite of everything, I need somebody to catch on to that tonight and, and just reach up to heaven and say, God, in spite of everything, I'm going to act like Job. I want the anointing of Job in this hour because I don't want to sin because of what's going on right now. You know what's happening to George Floyd. You know, I begin to declare like uh, Job did, in spite of. In spite of what you're going through right now, I'm not going to run back to sin. I'm not going to run back to the psychics and the philosophies of the world. And neither will I accuse God of doing wrong. Job also was famously uh, saying, we're still talking about friction. Because if you know anything about Job's life, the Bible says in one day, his whole world turned upside down. One day, he had a lot of children gone. One day, he was a wealthy businessman. One day, his life changed. One day, his life changed, and it changed for the worse. He ended up sick. The Bible says he had boils that were oozing pus and all kinds of unnatural things out of his body because God said, I, 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 I allowed Satan to do that. I allowed Satan that to Joe. I allowed Satan to cause that friction 
in Job's life. And I gave one directive that you can do what you need to do, but you cannot take his life. I believe God would say that over us as a people. Some of us have been released to the hand of the enemy, not to our liking, not understanding why full of friction and frustration, but yet holding on to our faith. Is anybody tonight full of frustration, friction everywhere you look, but yet you're holding on to the faith that uh, began to be established in. And I just want to say to you, do, does the world have a hold on you more than the hand of God? Does the world, are you running? After the world? Are you running after movements? Are you running after this and running after that? Are you participating in things that you have not been led by the Spirit to participate in? Do you know whatever you participate in, you still have to get an okay from God as a child of God? We can be concerned. We, we can have Concern. We, we can be just like the world if we want to. Why? Because we were called out of darkness. We were now called into the marvelous light of God. And I like what Job said. Listen, he had a revelation and I pray, uh, I pray that you will receive a revelation in this season. I pray that the church body will receive a, a, a cumulative re a revelation, uh, a revelation that we all can hold on to and drive this darkness of the song. But he said, one thing I know, uh, protest doing wrong, good cops, bad cops, bad cops causing friction with good cops, uh, bad teachers causing friction for good teachers, good husbands, uh, uh, bad husbands rather, Husband and wives causing friction for people who are supposed to be in relationship. That's a prophetic word to somebody. You won't even date again because of the friction that you went through in a previous relationship. And it's fragmented your faith. You don't even believe God has somebody else for you because of that friction that went on in that last relationship. And I just want to prophesy to you, not that I'm prophesying, I'm looking out the window because I'm in my office and it's such a beautiful day. But listen, you need to let go of that friction from the past and grab hold to the faith and, and be open, be epithet, that's the word, be open to God possibly sending love in your life again. But tonight we're talking about faith and friction. Y'all send me some hearts and let you uh, in this manner. So Job said, for I know my Redeemer lives. I know he lives. I see what's going on. I see the hurt, the pain, the frustration, the chaos. I know this has been a 400-year journey. This has been a, a longer than that journey. Just like the children of Israel, they have been held hostage to a, a, a system that was, that was called friction among them. And, and so much friction, God said, all you want to do is work, and I need work. So he sent someone, and, and Joe had his own as I mentioned before, and he said, for I know, I don't know a lot, but what I do know is that my Redeemer lives, and at last, at last, I will stand upon the earth. Oh, amen, hallelujah, right there. When look at uh, John 15 and 7, we have to remember this, that, write this one down, John chapter 15, verse 17. The Bible declares that we are in the world, but we are not of the world. Do you know Jesus told his disciples that they were going to have to uh, be uh, in this? They were following him, right? Because they, want, they, were, they wanted to know who he was. He said, listen, in 1 Peter chapter 2 and 11, this is what he told his disciples, and you know, if you know the word of the Lord, Jesus' ministry was full of friction. Mm -hmm. He released faith, he released miracles, he turned water into wine, he had a fish fry on a Friday night, fed the women, the men, and the children, and had some baskets left over. Amen, somebody. But his ministry was 
full of friction and so much so he had to tell his disciples that were following him that they would be like aliens and strangers in the world and 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 they had to friction to their thoughts like aliens and strangers we thought aliens were just of the modern day but no aliens have have been a part of the kingdom conversation for a long time. So Jesus had uh, to be with me. You're going to be uh, experiencing some friction, maybe to the level that I am. Uh, the greatest friction was him going to and likes to let me know you're getting this. I got to say this again. I have to say this again. Jesus, uh, relationship to people who were outcasts. It was not social. It was redemptive. Can you say that with social? Jesus' whole ministry full of friction everywhere he turned. Sadducees, Pharisees, everywhere he turned. Publicans, everybody. Everybody caused him some level of friction. But he remained steadfast, unmovable, and he abounded in what God had called him to do. Jesus' mission was not social as much as it was redemptive. I know I'm going to get some email and call about that. Somebody going to check that, but it, it was redemptive. Yes, he fed people. Yes, he healed. That fits within a social confine, but at the end of the day, it was all about drawing people to his Father, which are in heaven. So his ministry was full of friction, and one thing he didn't do, he did not not tell the disciples that and when people join our churches and uh, become participants in our ministry, we let them know that once you start this walk, this journey to love, heal, and grow, you are going to experience friction. One of the main places you will experience friction is when it comes to your finances. Many of, 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 of kingdom people are suffering and struggling because they let people who are out of God, who are living fragmented and frictionified lives, Tell them you shouldn't give your money to the church. That preacher stealing and blah, blah, blah. Y'all heard those lies. But the way that we, we do what God is calling us to do uh, is, number one, to recognize like the disciples had to a aha moment and recognize I'm an alien and I'm strange. I'm peculiar. See, the Bible says these words of us and that causes friction for some believers, why? Believers want to look like the world. They want to act like the world. They want to dress like the world. And we know God is looking at the heart. But come on now, sometimes your, your look is, is causing friction, right? It's not causing people to uh, run the faith. It's causing friction. So I want to encourage you from 1 Timothy. Ooh, and I got a few minutes and I promise I'm going to stop. In five minutes and whatever I have not completed, I'll be back next week. But I want to tell you, um, because everything we say, everything we preach, everything we sing uh, is uh, for encouragement, right? So those of us who are equippers, according to Ephesians 4 and 11, gave some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists teachers for the equipping until you get to a place where the friction is not freaking you out anymore. Oh, yeah. When, there, when you can see friction, no friction, but you can handle friction, then from that gem that I spoke about earlier uh, from the quote. Do we need to hear that quote again? Do we need to hear that quote again? Uh, the gem cannot be polished without friction, nor man without trials. Yeah, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but it is the Lord who delivers us from them all. So let's get to the encouragement that I want to share with you. But before I, I, I want to give you a definition of friction, because in previous 
um, breakthrough Bible studies, I had been talking about the anointing, right? So I looked up what this word friction meant, and guess what it means? It means the rubbing of one's body against another. It means the closing or of opposing views. But I like this. I, I want to bring this into uh, your understanding. The rubbing, the friction is of one's body against another in protest, in a war cry, in a march, in a protest with what we're in now. That is, people are protesting, and that is the definition of friction, where we are rubbing against one another because we need our war cry to be heard. Remember I told you anointing was something that was rubbed or smeared on you? Why am I making this point? Because as long as you have the anointing of God, the Holy Spirit working and present in your life, uh, the, the rubbing of, of you in protesting and war cry situations will always work out favorably. I need man, I, I see the hearts, I see the lights, I, I see you, I see you, Dominique Smith, thank you so much for tuning in, but, but the word of Jesus, let's remember this, it wasn't so much social, even though he did social things, his work was redemptive. And remember, you are an alien. You are a stranger. You are a peculiar people, holy nation. Uh, and I want to give you some encouraging points from First Timothy chapter 6. Write that down. Something First Timothy chapter where we're going to how we deal with friction and faith as the people of God. First Timothy chapter 6 and 12 says that we are to fight. Yeah, we a lot of fighting going on right now. George Floyd situation. This is a world. But the Bible tells us in First Timothy chapter 6 and 12 that we fight, but we need to fight the good fight of faith. I have two minutes. You've got to fight the good fight of faith. And I'm going to conclude with that. And next week, we're going to get to the other points uh, of encouragement in on friction and faith. You have to fight. Come on and declare, I'm a fighter, but I'm going to have to fight the fight of good faith if I am a by God. And when we look at this word fight in the original was written, it is the word agon, A-G-O-N. And what word do we get from agon? We get agonized. We get agony. I'm, I'm fighting because I'm agonized. There's agony going on. And the word agon in the original context that it was written, it means to struggle. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> it means to struggle. Do you know friction is going to lead you to faith is a struggle? We, we tell people, have faith, just hold on, just hang in there. And that's a struggle because they are words that seemingly don't have a, a, a life a road map or in which we do this. But Timothy was told by his, his, his grandmother Eunice, who was a powerful woman of God, who agonized culturally because of the suppression of women in her day. Women were property back then. And in some countries now, we are still. And God said, no, the friction that I'm going to have Jesus Christ is going to, to liberate women and bring men and women together in the context that I've always desired since the Garden of Eden. Friction came on the scene a few 
at the beginning of time through the hand of Eve. And anything that births through a woman, it multiplies. We are seeing today culturally, remember I talked about um, philosophies and trends and movements and how they are in a direct contrast to God. Listen, you're not fighting against me. You are not fighting uh, even again. You might be fighting against yourself because you're trying to transition. But uh, all of that came into place, um, unfortunately, in the garden. But you still have to fight the good fight of faith. Just um, through this system that we're now using to uh, teach the gospel. I can feel some of you all struggle. You have relationship struggle. You got emotional struggles. You got health struggles. You got all kind of struggles. There's not enough paper and pens in the world to write out all the kind of struggles that I'm you are going through. But the Bible said in chapter six. Let me check my time. Seven thirty-three. A few minutes over. I'm gonna stop. But it, it said in First Timothy chapter 6 and 12, that we are to fight the good fight of faith. Struggle good. You know, I, I used to say in our lean years, I made the struggle look good. We didn't have a whole lot of money. We had, uh, drove our cars to church on what I used to call fumes of faith. But I kept my hair done. I kept my me and my husband, we kept looking. Nobody knew the agon we were in. Nobody knew the struggle we were going through. Nobody knew the struggle we were going through uh, in our relationship. Because anything that's going to grow and blossom, it's going to agon. It's going to struggle. And, and the word uh, good is the word kalen, K-A-L-E-N in its original context, and it means something valuable or virtuous. So what is 1 Timothy 6 and 12 saying? It is saying, if we are going to fight a faith, and you are going to fight, you're not going to run in a corner and hide. You are going to come to your senses and know that you are a soldier in the army of the Lord. Hello, you didn't enlist in the United States services, but you are a prince's warrior. You are a soldier in the army of the Lord. You are going to struggle, but we're going to do it together. Come on, somebody. You're not going to walk away from me. I'm not going to walk away from you. We're going to struggle together. We're going to cry together. We're going to pray together others burdens together we're gonna watch miracles together worship in the house of the lord together we're gonna praise and worship and glory and adoration to the lord we're gonna celebrate when you get your god you know the thing that you've been trying to get that's what we're gonna do because we're fighting the good fight of faith we are going to fight the good fight of faith together because we're gonna struggle but it's a valuable somebody. Every struggle ain't value, but it's a, it was a valuable struggle when I had to push babies out of a small cavity on my body. It was a beautiful struggle. And I want to say to you tonight, uh, Pastor Lee and members of the Christian Fellowship are praying for the body of Christ. We're praying for the city of San Antonio. We are praying that thy kingdom come and God's will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. There are no protests in heaven. Cries in heaven. There are no knees to the neck in heaven. There's no hate because you're brown and someone's white. There's none of that in heaven. And I'm telling you, I'm excited. We're going to put on our boxing gloves, get our and make up right and have gone together. We are going to struggle together because we know that all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord. Hey, that's our time here at Bethel International Christian Fellowship. You we come 
uh, to you uh, to help strengthen you in your most holy faith. We come because we love this journey that we're on to love, heal, and grow. We would ask you, and first of all, we want to thank you, those of you who support every week, every month, those of you who have kept the doors of Bethel International. Thank you so much. If you want to give uh, sow a seed, you know, that's agonizing. That causes friction sometimes because you're juggling bills. But God made a promise. You take care of my house, I'll take care of your house. So go to give me -E L-I-F-Y. Look for Bethel International Christian Fellowship. You won't picture of me and my handsome husband. But you don't give to the wrong Bethel. And, and make a tax-deductible contribution. Every uh, dollar, every hundreds of dollars, every thousands of dollars that you give is a tax-deductible uh, contribution. And we will make sure that at the end of the year, a statement. Want to let uh, Yolanda Williams know that we are praying for you. We are praying for you that you will rise up. You're in agony right now. I was trying to scroll through so I could say hello to everybody, but uh, really appreciate you tuning in tonight. Um, and I'm going to finish up next week with uh, friction or faith. And I pray God will drop some revelation uh, that you will have an aha and awakening uh, from this message. Please share this message, please. You know, maybe it's nothing to you, but somebody needs to hear what thus says the Lord. We pray that the eyes of your understanding would be open. We pray that God will bless you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. We pray that you will put on the weapons of the mighty to the pulling down of every stronghold. Please call our office at 210-651-3331. Uh, website is BethelSA.org. And let me tell you something. My husband, Pastor Lee Petty, of the Lord for you. Tune in Sunday. Pastor Lee Petty will have a uh, word from the Lord because he, he prays uh, in the presence of the Lord. You know, hate to say this, but more than I do. I think prophets have a different way we flow, but we we got to do. We love you all. Uh, have a wonderful week. It's Wednesday. Days left. Hump day. Uh, pray for us as we will be praying for you. So your financial contributions because this is the ground. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.